what vibrations and waves look like. So we're going to talk about something called simple harmonic motion. What's it mean for something to be harmonic or to be in harmony? You know, any ideas or what comes to mind there? Uniform. Uniform, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good definition. Okay. So simple harmonic motion, there's a couple um, different things here. But the definition for simple harmonic motion is listed here. A phenomena characterized by repetitive, identical, or near-identical motion. Okay, so go ahead and get that written down. Um, and we'll start talking about some examples of simple harmonic motion here. So listed below that are a couple examples of simple harmonic motion. And those aren't necessarily exam examples that we see in everyday life. Can someone think of an applicable simple harmonic motion example? What is a pendulum? Yeah, Claire, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay. What is a pendulum? Does anyone know what a pendulum is? Yeah, it swings back and forth. So in like a grandfather clock? Okay, we see the pendulum that swings down. Does anyone's grandparents have a grandfather clock in their house, right? Um, you might have one, but most of the time it's grandparents that have those clocks. Um, that's a good example. Um, any type of vibration, okay, most vibrations, natural vibrations are simple harmonic. So um, how many of you, uh, like, mow the yard? How many of you sit on a lawnmower? Okay, how many of you have ever mowed your yard? Please, most of you raise your hand. Please. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <Come on. laughs> okay. Um, when you get off the lawnmower, do you feel like your hands are still shaking for a while? Right? If you have one of these that you have, yeah. you're, you get off the lawnmower and your hands are still like shaking. Okay. Those, those motions are, are constant. They're uniform. Those vibrations are consider, considered simple and harmonic. Okay. Because it's near identical. Um, an object that's in motion is what we call a simple harmonic oscillator. Does anyone know what the word oscillate means? Yeah, back and forth, or like a fan, it spins, right? It means it's, it's talking about a uniform motion, something that's going back and forth um, uniformly, okay? So an object that has been in motion or in simple harmonic motion is called a simple harmonic oscillator. <laughs> You'll see simple harmonic motion um, abbreviated SHM, okay? Um, and a simple harmonic oscillator would be SHO. Yeah, I don't know why we feel the need to abbreviate these things. Apparently we do. Okay. So the object that's being in simple harmonic motion is an oscillator. Um, otherwise, it's just called simple harmonic motion. This is an example that's in your textbook that kind of shows us simple harmonic motion. Not something that we see super commonly, uh, something attached to a spring that slides back and forth. But physics examples are never super common. Okay. So um, we have an object that's attached to a spring. Right. That object's going to move back and forth, back and forth. Will that motion ever stop? In a perfect physics world? No. No. What could cause that object to stop? Friction. Friction. Friction or an outside force. Yeah. Okay. So otherwise, it's going to keep going back and forth. It's going to stretch that spring, then compress the spring, then go back to its original position. Okay? So this is a lot of vocabulary that we're going to go through for simple harmonic motion. Okay? Would you like it all at one time, and then we'll talk through them a little bit? Yeah. Okay. All right, there we go. <laughs> you, can, you can abbreviate it, okay? You don't have to write out word for word. If you already know what they mean, great. Um, oscillation is very simple, yet a very kind of broad term. An oscillation can be 
one turn of a fan, it can be one wavelength, it can be um, the time that a spring goes back and forth and back to its original position, okay? It's any one cycle or um, one kind of back and forth of the motion, okay? So oscillation is a kind of a broad term. Displacement is anything from the equilibrium point, any distance from the equilibrium point. Can displacement be both positive and negative? Yes. Yes, right? We can move backwards from our, um, from our original equilibrium point. So our equilibrium point is when our spring is at rest, um, or when our wave is at the center point or anything like that, um, it's the equilibrium point. Period and frequency we've seen before. Hopefully we're recognizing those, right? Period is seconds per, per oscillation, seconds per one oscillation. Frequency is the opposite of that. So frequency is how many revolutions or how many oscillations per second, okay? Um, amplitude is the maximum displacement we can reach in a spring. Um, it's given as an A, Right? A is for amplitude, but it's measured in meters. Okay? Displacement should also be measured in meters. So if we think about springs, right, do we usually measure our displacement for springs in meters? Right? Do springs usually stretch in terms of a meter long or two meters long? Not usually. Usually uh, we're talking about centimeters or millimeters displacements. So you do have to be careful in terms of um, converting centimeters to meters or whatever it is. Okay. Um, wavelength we talked about is given by a lambda, Greek letter, which is kind of an upside down Y. Distance between successive features of a wave. Okay. Um, similar to an oscillation, but here we're talking about the distance of one of those oscillations. Um, and then velocity, we, we know what that is. Okay, so let's look at a simple wave here. Uh, and I'm going to put this to kind of a picture form. So amplitude is given the distance from our equilibrium point. Okay, so the red line here is our equilibrium point. That's kind of our center line. Um, amplitude, can it be both positive and negative? Mm, no. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? We're looking at the bottom, um, the maximum stretch of the bottom, and that would be a negative. Okay. Wavelength is important to understand. It's either from peak to peak or trough to trough or middle to middle over here, okay, it's any one of those um, successive, but it has to be all the way um, up and back down or all the way through that entire motion, okay. So if we were looking at that spring example, right, here's our spring and our box attached to the spring, um, if we were to stretch it farther, okay, this distance would be called our what? Our displacement. If it was the maximum that that spring could stretch, it would also be called the amplitude. Okay, so those two terms can be interchangeable, right? An amplitude is always a displacement, but a, but a displacement is not always the amplitude. Okay, does that kind of make sense? Okay, amplitude is always a type of displacement. Displacement is not always necessarily an amplitude. Okay, so they can be interchangeable. Sometimes they're not. All right. If I compress my spring... What would my amplitude or my um, displacement have to be here? It would have to be negative, right? As I'm compressing that thing, it's going to end up being negative. All right, so just think about those in terms of that problem. Okay? Um, connection between period and frequency. Hopefully we know this equation already. I would go ahead and put it on your equation sheet. You're going to need to use it. Um, but you might already know it already. Okay? Um, now we're going to be able to connect the velocity of a wave the wavelength, right, the distance it travels through one oscillation over the time it takes to travel that distance. Okay, so this is velocity, wavelength, over period. Sorry. Okay, and this is the, an alternate equation for this same situation, essentially. Um, since we know t is equal to 1 over frequency, we can plug that in here, which would get, then give us this equation, so wavelength times frequency. Either of these two things would give us um, the velocity of that wave, okay, how fast it is moving. Okay, what would our units be for velocity of a wave? 
meters per second. What wavelength is still measured in meters. The period of something is how, how long does it take to make one oscillation, so it would be in seconds. Okay, so our unit is still meters per second. So those, this equation on your equation sheet, one of these two or both on your equation sheet. Okay. So now we're going to move on to um, the connection between energy and this spring system. We've talked about potential and kinetic energy okay, a few chapters ago, but this semester. Okay. So can we remember the equation for potential energy of a spring yeah, it does have a K in it. Potential energy equals? One half KX squared. KX squared, very nice. Potential energy equals one half KX squared. Where K is? Constant. constant. Good. Is there one across the board spring constant for springs? Yeah. No. No. Each one has uh, their own individual spring constant. And what does it mean as my spring constant increases? What happens to the spring? Does it get tougher or lighter? <coughs> tougher. Tougher. The bigger the spring constant, the harder it is to stretch or compress. Okay? Um, when we talk about mechanical energy or the total energy of the system, that's a combination of what two types of energy? Kinetic, Kinetic and potential. Good. So if we look at the total mechanical energy at one point in our system, kinetic plus potential, so the kinetic energy equation doesn't change. This is potential energy of a spring. Okay, We've done this equation before. This should hopefully not be anything too new for us. Um, we're just reapplying it now for springs. Okay, And is this equation right here given, is this a before and an after equation or just a, sp uh, um, a pinpoint of time? Yeah, this is just one spot in time, right? If we wanted to do a before and an after, we'd say 1 half mv squared plus 1 half kx equals 1 half mv squared plus 1 half kx squared. Okay, and we might look at that this chapter as well. Good news is that we're going to assume all of our simple harmonic motion um, systems are frictionless, so we don't have to worry about friction. We don't have to worry about outside forces. Um, Unless it's a vertical spring, in which case we'd add in the potential energy of gravity as well. And we'll look at that a little bit. But um, we assume all of our systems are frictionless, so our kinetic energy and our mechanical energy is all going to be conserved here. Okay, so that means before equals after. But in part A, it's being compressed its maximum value. So at that point, does it have potential kinetic or both? Uh, potential. potential. Only potential, right? When it's being compressed, is it in motion? No. no, so it has no velocity, so it can't have any kinetic energy. It has the potential to do what? Spring forward. Yeah, to spring forward or get back to its equilibrium point, okay, or pass its equilibrium point. But at, at, point, at part A, the top picture here, we've got all potential energy. As we put it in motion, right, at part B, it's in motion moving past its equilibrium point, okay? So as it's at its equilibrium point exactly, does it have any potential energy? No, right? As it's at its equilibrium point, it's, it's moving, it's getting out of that compression. It just so happens to hit past its equilibrium point, but it's still in motion. So at that point, it's got only kinetic energy. As it stretches to its maximum, it's got all what? All potential. Good. And then at part D, it's somewhere in between the two. Right? It's still in motion back to its equilibrium point, but it's still being stretched a little bit. Okay, so we've got both of those types there. Does that kind of make sense? So we looked at energy and simple harmonic motion, and now we're going to look at how to solve period and frequency in simple harmonic motion. Okay, these two equations should go on your equation sheet. These um, period and frequency equations must be for a spring. Okay, and why is that the case? Why do these have to be for a spring oscillation system? Yeah, it has K in there. You can't use a spring constant if we don't have a spring. Okay? So these equations are specifically for spring. Um, 
But something that you should recognize in terms of simple harmonic motion and the oscillator itself, um, it doesn't depend on the amplitude. We don't ever plug in here X. It doesn't depend how far we stretch it or how far we compress it. Um, the period does not depend on that. So how fast it takes to make one oscillation does not matter how far we stretch it or how far we compress it. That um, period and frequency is going to depend just on the spring constant, okay, how bouncy the spring is or how tough the spring is. Okay. So those two equations should go both on your equation sheet. M is mass and K is spring constant. What does mass have to be measured in? Kilograms. kilograms. Good. Has to be in kilograms. Yeah. All right, an 80 newton meter spring is extended vertically from a hook, and a mass is placed on the end. Determine the period of the motion. Oh, So 80 Newton meters, sorry, I'll give you just another minute. This is K. All right, vertically from a hook, that doesn't make a whole lot of difference to us right now. Um, in future problems, it will a little bit, but here it doesn't make a difference for us. Um, the mass is 0. 0.6. Determine the period of the motion. So do we care how far it stretches? That makes no difference to us. Okay, so period means we're solving for T or F? T. T. Okay, so we'd say T equals 2 pi times square root of M over K. Um, in your calculator, I'd start inside the square root and work your way out. Um, anytime you can do it without re-entering those numbers, just using the answer button, you're going to have a little bit more accurate answer. So start inside the um, square root and then work your way out. Uh, when you don't divide by 2 pi, you don't have to put in parentheses when you do divide by 2 pi. Just multiplying by 2 pi, you don't have to put it in parentheses. <laughs> Okay, um, tell me what we got. Abby, tell me what you got. Good. And what is our unit for period? Seconds. Very good. 0.54 seconds. So this allows us to um, determine the force that's acting on this spring, right? Um, whatever force is going to make it displace this many meters. Okay, so we're looking at force in comparison to the spring constant times its displacement. It's going to allow us to look at that force. So um, if a spring is hanging vertically, the force acting on the mass will just be the gravitational force. Okay, that's something that we have to think about. If the, force is, if, if the system is not vertical, then in order to displace this object, we have to push it or pull it. Right? That's what a force is. Um, so then we would just look at what the applied force is. Okay, but if it's vertical, then we're going to be looking at the gravitational force that's going to pull it down. Okay? Force is always measured in Newtons. Good. Spring constant is newtons divided by meters. That's where we get the unit for spring constant. Okay, if we solve for k here, we would move x to the other side. So that would be newtons over meters equals k. That's where the unit comes from. Okay. All right. Um, this is just an, an explanation of that last problem, that last situation that we looked at. So if we've got a vertical spring, our displacement here is x. Um, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference here in terms of if we put our x as negative when it's stretching here. Um, but realistically, when we stretch the spring, we think positive displacement. When you compress it, then we think a negative displacement. Vertical, you can think about it a little differently because since gravity is pulling it down, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, to be honest. Um, we would use m times g here for the gravitational force to solve for x. Okay, this equation, These equations don't have to go on your equation sheet. This top one should be. The other ones are just... Um, substitutions off of that or expansions from that so they don't really need to be on that. Alright, let's try one here.
All right, so let's think about this situation. We've got a car that has a mass of 1,200 kilograms. We have a family that has a mass of 200 kilograms that gets into the car, um, and the springs compress three centimeters. So um, when we're looking for the spring constant, we would just use this equation, F equals KX. <laughs> Um, to be the gravitational force, yeah. So let's think about let's think about the system of the car in general. So when we build this car and we build the springs, with, is does the weight of the car compress the springs? No, no, right. That's what they're built for. That right. Oh. The springs are built to to withhold the weight of the car. So what would be the only weight that would cause these springs to compress? Yeah. The, family. the family itself. So when we're looking at this, those springs are built to hold the twelve hundred kilogram car they're going to compress any extra weight that goes on top of that. Okay, so the gravitational force that's acting here would be mass, which would just be the 200 kilogram family times 9.8 equals K times X. And we convert X to meters, would give us 0 0.03. It would be negative and it's compressing? It could be um, not all that particular when it comes to the force. Dope, dope. Okay, and the spring constant realistically has no, um, no um, positive or negative, no direction. So if you were going to talk about negative compression, you would have to make gravity negative, which would give you a positive K anyway. Okay. Okay. All right, so what did we get when we plug that in? Good. And the units for this are Newton over meter. Okay, a fly has a mass of 0.15 grams. It's caught in a spider's web that vibrates with the frequency of 4 hertz. Okay, hertz is the same thing as oscillations per second or waves per second or whatever. It's, it, it's basically, yeah, cycles per second. Okay, um, so that's your, that could be a, a value for frequency. Does it have to change it out of hertz? No. Nope. So would you have to use the frequency equation? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. We want to know the spring constant, but we have frequency, which is 4. We have mass, which is it kept at 0 0.01, at 0.15? No, no. no, we move that three decimals to the left, so 0 0.00015. And we don't know what K is. Okay, is this a vertical? Does it tell us that it's vertical? Doesn't tell us. Okay, so we don't know if it's going to be a vertical problem or not, but we have an equation to solve for it using the frequency. Okay, so let's go back to that frequency equation, which is 1 over 2 pi square root of k over m, I believe. Okay. Okay, so algebraically, this takes a couple different steps because our um, variable is within the square root. Okay, our first step algebraically should be moving that 2 pi over. After that, what should we do? After we move the 2 pi over, oops, 4 times 2 pi. We have a square root, so what do we need to do to get rid of a square root? We want to square both sides. And then we multiply it by the mass to move that by itself. And we get, should we be, let's just think about this here. A, a spider's web that vibrates, are we thinking a big spring constant or a little spring constant? Yeah, hopefully we're thinking little here, right? That's not a very tough spring. Okay, it's a, it's a web. Okay, so 0 0.095 newton meter, newton divided by meters. And so now we're looking at we're looking at the same web, but now our insect weighs 0.5 grams instead of 0.15 grams. So now we want to solve for frequency um, of that same web if our mass increased. So similar problem to the last one, except we're looking at frequency here instead of um, force. Okay, does the spring constant of the web change? No. Convert that mass to kilograms.
Would we be expecting our frequency to go up or go down here? Down. Down. Right, if the web itself doesn't change, but we add something heavier to it, the original frequency was four. It should go down. Yeah, it originally was four. The second one was 2.19. That's going down. Did you do parentheses divide by 2 pi? You know what I'm saying? Or did you just do divide by 2 times pi? Uh, all your parentheses one divided by 2 pi. You got to do parentheses 1 divided by parentheses 2 pi. Parentheses, parentheses. 